Hey friend, welcome to my podcast, The Fit Soul. I'm your host, Amy Ramsey. In this podcast, we will be discussing soul-filled strategies to unleash your confidence, increase your energy, and all the things healthy lifestyle. If you're a Christian woman who is ready to reach your God-given potential, walk worthy of your calling with abundant joy and energy, girlfriend, you are in the right spot. I mean, you only have one life to live. You might as well maximize it. Buckle in and thanks for listening. This podcast is absolutely mind-blowing. By practicing this one simple, easy, free thing, (laughs) you can actually get more energy naturally, help balance your hormones, control your appetite, sleep better. Oh my goodness, there's so many benefits from doing this one thing, y'all. I cannot wait for you to hear the science behind this. And it's so simple. And this is also my very dear friend, Deborah Leiter, whom I just love and absolutely adore. You're going to love her too. So um, take some notes. You're going to love this podcast and be sure and share it with your friends because we just need to get this word out. All right, y'all enjoy. Deborah Leiter, welcome to the Fit Soul Podcast. Girl, I am so glad to have you here today. So exciting. (laughs) I am so excited to be here, Amy. Thank you for having me. I love you so much. Yeah. Girl, I love you so much too. We go way back. We were just uh, catching up before we hit uh, record and both of us got a little teary-eyed, a little emotional. We've been friends for more than 20 years and gosh, number one, I don't want to sound like (laughs) the old lady. Where did the years go? (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we go way back and lots happened. Yeah. 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 We've been through a lot together. Um, You know, there's just something really precious about a longstanding, deep seated relationship where you have so much history together and our foundation of our friendship has always been the Lord and family. And so, um, We've just always had that together and no matter what's happened or gone on, we may not talk for years, but Deborah's the type <laughs> one quick little second. Hey girl, what's up? And we're off to the races. Like you picked yeah. up where you left off five years ago or whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We have a soul connection, we have a heart connection. So time, you know, time doesn't matter when you've got that. Mm-hmm. So no, no, yeah. no, we'll be, we old ladies still, still together. Yes. We old ladies. Yes, yes, um, yes. yes. Um, okay. Excited. So Deborah, Deborah is, I'll go over her, some of her credentials. It's kind of a lot though. I mean, these are big, fancy words, Deborah. You may have to explain these, uh, break them okay, down. I will. <laughs> yes, I but will. I will. Um, we're talking today about restoring energy in some ways that are going to sound Uh, it's kind of simple. The thing about this is the thing that drew me to that. I like, I reached out to Deborah. I'm like, girl, I got to get you on the podcast. We've got to talk about this because so many women are struggling with their energy level. Um, And a lot of the women that listen to my podcast, Deborah are over 40, that kind of over 40 years old. Mm -hmm. And so many of the women that I talk to, they're looking for energy, increased energy and gosh, they've tried so many, you know, nutrition is the foundation for functional nutrition uh, for functional, right? Anything functional and integrative. So that's always kind of my go-to and, um, you know, of course, all of the different things that we're going to talk about together, but this one thing, so I, I want to, um, I want y'all to get excited about this. This one thing is free and it's available to yes. everyone and it's yes. so simple to do. So you guys, you're going to want to pay attention to this and we might throw around a few big words, but just know that what, how to get energy is actually free for you. It's available for you. And I find this so mind blowing and so fascinating, Deborah. So Deborah is, um, we're going to talk yeah. a little bit about, um, she's an integrative health practitioner and she has a certification in applied quantum biology. Is it a certification or a degree, Deborah? It's a certification. Yeah. No, that not a degree. So fancy. Can you imagine? I'm yeah. that? Okay. This sounds yeah. so fancy. Um, and <laughs> it, this is based in quantum biology. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. Quantum. So I know that sounds like kind of a, I mean, we hear that word a lot. Like what does that actually mean? So it's really talking about 
getting down to the very smallest level of everything. So for biology, that would be like your mitochondria, your cells, your, you know, electrons, protons, photons, those kind of things. So how those things are running the show of how we feel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so important. So important. Right. Okay. So but that's kind of quantum. That's quantum. So, you know, as you were just talking about that, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of your cell, right? This is where we're going to get like most of our energy. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. And um, what we don't realize is a lot of us think we just getting energy like from food. And obviously that is one place we do get energy, but there's two other places that our mitochondria um, need to get energy from. And that is actually sunlight and grounding. So those are a couple of things that are really big in applied quantum biology because we can gather electrons from the sun, we can gather electrons from the earth, and we also get it from our food. So we really need to be taking care of our mitochondria. I don't think we realize that really all of our modern chronic diseases are rooted in mitochondrial dysfunction. So, you know, it's time to, we want to get to the root. A lot of times in integrative health, we talk about root cause. Right. And even with a lot of things we do in integrative health, we're just scratching, like we're, we're still kind of putting a bandaid on symptoms and we really want to get to the very bottom, which is your mitochondria. So, um, yeah. that's what I've learned in this course. Yeah. Well, I, I, I just love this. And, and so let's take it just a little bit simpler because I don't want, um, if you're listening to this and you're like, what the heck is mitochondria? Don't worry about it. Like, seriously, don't worry about it. But here's what happened. So a couple of years ago, Deborah on Facebook posted um, something about morning sunlight and how she was looking at the morning sunlight. She just mentioned like, go and get 10 minutes or so. I can't even remember, Deborah. Like I I just, you know, sometimes when you read things and you don't grasp like all of the details, but you're like, hey, I can go try that, you know? And I remember seeing your post and thinking, oh, I can go try that because I'm very familiar with grounding. You know, I I know the benefits of that. Um, I'm an integrative nutrition health coach as well. And I also had been hearing about sunlight and like even your eyes, it's good for your eyes to see the sunlight and don't wear sunglasses before 12 o'clock. So I'm I'm hearing these bits and pieces and I trust what Deborah is going to put out into the universe. Like I would actually absolutely trust her. So I did it, yeah. but here's the thing. I wasn't super consistent with it. You know, you know how you do things. Yeah. You're like, oh, let me, let me do it. But I would do it, but I right. wasn't super consistent. But then just several weeks ago, you posted something else and, you, yeah. and you shared your story of yeah. all that you were doing in your life. Right. All of the wonderful things, because you're a former faster way to fat loss coach. Um, and there's nothing wrong with faster way, you guys. If you are on faster way or if you're a faster way coach, uh, yeah. more power to you. But Deborah used to be one, and she was, I, I don't know, I just read through her post and then I read through this quantum word. I'm like, what, what the heck? But I was captivated, yeah. Deborah. Literally, I was like, oh my gosh. And yeah. I just screenshotted it. I text you. I'm like, I got to get you on the podcast. So I actually saved yeah. my questions for this podcast, but my questions are so right, simple. Yeah. Be like, <laughs> but I would love for you yeah. to just break down your story a little bit, Deborah, and share okay. with where you were um, and what was going on and share a little bit more about this. Okay. Yeah. So about two years ago, right at this time, it was right at springtime. Um, I was 49 at the time, you know, there's a lot of changes going on at this time in life. Um, but I was doing all the right things. Like you said, I was, um, very much, I was lifting weights weekly, tracking my macros just, and I was in very good physical health. I was Mm -hmm. feeling good, but I was very tired. Like Mm -hmm. when I say tired, I could not get through the day without needing a nap or a couple of shots of espresso, like at three or four Mm -hmm. in the day, just to, to get me through my evening. Like it was, it was rough. And I was also struggling with, um, I, I'm not going to call it depression because it really wasn't quite that bad, but just that blah feeling where you're just, you're just not yourself. And it's just really hard to get up and go. So I was exhausted basically. And, um, my husband had decided to go out of town for a month to renovate my parents' kitchen in another state. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to go to bed at eight o'clock. My kids are older. They can take care of everything. So I started going to bed at eight o'clock naturally after a few days of that, I'm starting to wake up so much earlier. And at this point I had been listening to a lot of, um, 
Instagram accounts on circadian health where, you know, these people are talking about the same thing, like go get morning sun, morning sun, morning sun. And I'm like, okay. And I tried it a few times too, Amy, just like you did. I kind of dabbled in it here and there. And I did like it, but I had never committed, you know, to making it a practice. But at this point, I got up, got myself out, and I started realizing very quickly within a few days, like, wait, I'm like getting through my whole day with, you know, no crashes. Um, my moods started to improve. And of course, at first, I'm just like, well, it's probably because I'm going to bed at eight o'clock. I mean, that's probably it. But there was something about maybe the ritual of going outside, um, really connecting and spending some time in nature and getting that sunlight. And I was also going out barefoot. So I was grounding that it quickly became like addictive, almost became a little bit like obsessed. Like I've got to get out and get my morning sun. Like it was changing me in a way that was very surprising. Um, so it just became my habit. It became something that was like a non-negotiable. I'm going to get my morning sun. And so I did go on and learn, you know, like why, why is this working? Like, why do I feel so much better when I do this? And I just quickly learned, like you were talking about the light does interact with our eye and it's particularly morning light is going to signal to our brain. Like we have a master clock in our brain and it's going to start a cascade of processes that activate our, our sex hormones, our neurotransmitters, like those things that make us feel good, like serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine, um, things like, you know, producing melatonin. So there's all this stuff going on that if you're not getting that morning light and we're just bathed in a lot of toxic light, blue light, like from our devices or, you know, overhead lights, that we're not getting the proper signals. Like our body does not know what to do. So there's a lot of chaos going on. So I think that's where kind of where I was before. I think my hormones are a little out of whack. Um, <laughs> I wasn't getting those neurotransmitters going like I wanted to get. So once I started getting that morning light and all those things started syncing back up, it's like magic. Like I'm telling you, it's like magic. Amazing. I really just almost felt reborn. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? So yeah, what, like what you would, what time of day, does that matter? What, like how, how soon yeah. after I get up when it's still dark? Like it's just dark yeah. for a hot minute for me when I get up, but how, like what, sure. what time does that, I mean, the timing of the light, can you share with yeah, us how you it did is, that process? Yeah, it is important and, and, and kind of chronological order is important because everything is kind of building. So ideally you want to wake up, you really want to go get sunlight first thing. Like if you're up, like you are before the sun comes up, Amy, this is where you would want to get a pair of blue light blocking glasses and, you know, have them by your bed to put those on, like, especially. You like, remember, Deborah? hang on. I just thought oh, yeah. something. Do you remember? I don't know what we were doing. We were talking about something years ago and you're like, yeah. oh, I just got these glasses. <laughs> what do you think? I'm like, um, I, yeah. I, they were I, big and ugly. Yeah. yeah. You're like, are they ugly? I'm like, yeah. I mean, I think those might yeah. be birth control glasses. Have you found some cuter ones? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, I, I need to, they have a lot cuter ones now, by the way, like okay. there's some really nice blue light blocking glasses you can get. But okay. honestly, when we wake up and we just like stick our phone in our mm -hmm. face, you know, before we get out of bed, we're actually getting like a dump of cortisol into our system. That stress hormone that, you know, causes a lot of belly fat and just, it really disrupts okay. so many hormonal cycles. So Ideally, they putting on blue, blue light, light blockers with readers. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can actually. You, you definitely can. Y'all, yeah. so go order your blue. Okay, listen, we're sounding really like we're midlife here. Order your blue light yeah. blockers with your readers, and you'll be good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and don't pick up your phone first thing anyway, right? Yeah, it's just not. You're just you're already before the day even starts. You're like sending a chaotic signal. Because your brain is going, oh my gosh, it is 12 noon. That's how bright that light is. We're behind. Dump cortisol, dump cortisol, dump cortisol, which in the morning you want your cortisol to just naturally rise. So when we go out and view sunrise, particularly like sunrise, like as it's coming up over the horizon, it's going to signal a slow release of cortisol. It's going to wake you up there. I mean, there's so many properties I could go on and on and about the science behind it. You've got infrared light that's 
good for your eyeballs. It's good for your skin. It's good for, you know, inflammation in your body. Wow. So um, seeing that morning sunrise is really important. Um, if you don't have a lot of time, like even if you just roll your, you know, window down in your car or open your window in your house, um, on naked eyes, this is very important. Like contacts and glasses really are going to interfere. So um, you really need to have naked eyes for sure. But even That's just neat. rolling down your window, the light frequency is going to get to you. So if you're like Crazy. super busy in the morning, Crazy. step outside for two minutes, roll down your window, open your window in your house. Um, Deborah, that's did all you, you say can do. two or 10? Two or 10? For what? I'm sorry. You said step outside for two minutes? Oh, or ten minutes? like even just two minutes. Yeah. Even if you just had two Crazy. minutes. Just getting that natural light into your eye to signal to the master clock in your brain, that's going to be better than nothing. Like you start where you start. So for me, like I'm spending as much time as possible outside. It really depends on my day, but the morning sunlight is super important. That sunrise light is important, but I do want to point out there is another set of frequency that comes um, uh, about an hour after sunrise, that's UVA light. That th That's the light that really starts to signal things like your sex hormones, your, your melatonin, your leptin, which has to do with our satiety and, and our body fat and how much energy is on our, you know, our body's able to burn. Like this has to do with metabolism, um, just so many things. Okay. So, so I'm, my mind is blown right now. And this is yeah. fascinating. I have a question then. So get up so then you're saying i'm just trying to process this through i'm an early riser so this is not an issue for me like i'm, I'm up when right. i'm up before the sun is up um on most days but get out do you try to know when the sun right like do you are you aware of what time the sun is rising and you're out okay and then you're saying yeah. so maybe apps. what there's apps apps what's the name what's what app do you recommend well there's 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 um the the app that i use the most that i really love it's just called circadian it's called circadian and it's going to tell you when sun is rising it's going to tell you when uv light uva light is available it's going to tell you like when uvb light comes in and that's the light we make vitamin d with in our skin um yeah it's going to go through the whole day and that particular mm -hmm. app has a ton of education on circadian oh. biology so it's, so you go out a couple of times. So you're, you're like, okay, now it's an hour later. I'm going to go back out so I can get the left in. I can get, and you, you yeah. go and you, do you, are you like barefoot grounding and you're just focusing on the shine? Yeah. So like I go get my morning sunlight. Usually I'll walk out on my front porch to get the sunrise light. You know, I may not stay out there quite as long. Then I come back in and kind of see what my day is looking like, you know, depends on how busy things are, you know, deal with the dog or whatever. Then I usually make my breakfast. Then I take my breakfast outside and I eat my breakfast while I'm sitting barefoot on the ground facing the east to get my UVA light. So that's like my ritual. That's my, and, you know, depending on what my day looks like, I'll stay out there, you know, 10 minutes to an hour, you know, depending on what I can do. But I'm outside pretty much all morning as much as I can. Okay. So for, let me ask you this, just, I'm just kind of thinking through for a woman of faith, for a woman that's like, you know what? I like to have my quiet time in the morning and not, like you could literally just take your, your scripture, your Bible, your whatever, yep. your breakfast, your coffee yep. or water or tea, whatever you're drinking. And yep. you're just, you're saying, what do you have to stare? I mean, I know this sounds so basic, Deborah. So don't laugh at me, but I feel like I won't be the only one with this question. <laughs> so I know that part of it, that getting the sunrise is really important. I mean, the sun is really important, like on your skin, it's good for your skin. But in, in this whole, okay, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna take this. This could be as easy derailing situation, but yeah, skin cancer has not gone down because we're covering ourselves right. with all of the uh, sunblock. Am oh, I yeah. right or am I right? Oh, there's a whole nother podcast. That's a whole on nother that. one. Yeah. I'm going to bring you back on. We'll talk about that next time. Um, and okay, at the sure. same time, I do cover my face for the most part with sunblock because I don't want the aging on my face. So I get it. But anyway. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's okay. We're not going to go there. All right. But. Totally right then. But you don't have to be staring at the sun or do you need to be staring at the sun? What are you saying there? 
No, I, I would say do not stare directly at the sun. The only time I'm looking directly at the sun is literally when it's coming up over the horizon. Now I do have like trees block. I mean, my house I faces too. east, my front porch does. So I'm looking that way, but you know, in the winter time when the leaves are on the trees, I can see the sun come up. So I'm looking at the sun then, um, and this could get into something else too, but I do wear contacts. My vision is not good, right? but that really early morning infrared light is really healing for the eyes. And there's a lot of people who've improved their vision. So I do look at the sun during sunrise and it, it's comfortable. You know, there comes to a point where you cannot look at the sun. It's not going to feel good on your eyes. So clearly do not look at the sun when that's happening because that can damage your eyes when it starts to get more the UV light to look directly. So um, you could take your, you know, your Bible outside or whatever and just be in light. Light is going to find its way to your retina. You don't have to be staring directly at it. Yeah. I'm glad I asked that question then. Okay. Yeah. So then let me, let me kind of make sure I've got this right. Go. Yes. The, what's important to do is to go and look at the sun when it's rising. Mine's like yours, yes. Deborah. My porch is like, well, you've been to my house. I've been to your house. Yeah. It's, it's filtered yeah. through the tree. So I really don't even get a very good look at the sun, but yeah, it's okay. And so are you recommending, didn't you say about 10 minutes would be ideal if you could just kind of ground yourself? I mean, it, yes. I would say as much time as you can spend, like I know, but I'm being realistic. Like I work from home. So I do have the privilege and the ability to structure my day around this. And now that I've learned so much about the health ben benefits of it, like I am, I do structure my day around sunlight and getting outside, but, but I know I have the privilege to do that, but you don't have to be a work from home to be able to do this. So if you've got two minutes, go take two minutes on the front porch. If you have 15 minutes, take 15 minutes. I mean, it's whatever you can do, but I would say at least two to 10 minutes of sunrise light is, is ideal. And then particularly if you're somebody really struggling with hormonal imbalance, um, you know, metabolism or really low energy, like, especially if your mood is affected, if you're somebody who just our mental health, there's so much of that going on these days. Um, I'm going to like, there are healing doses of sunlight. And I would say at least 15 minutes of UVA light is going to be super important just to get, you know, the signals working, your brain working with your body and sending the correct signals, producing the right amount of hormones, releasing all of that. Um, you're also um, producing melatonin and UVA light that you're going to use later on. And let me tell you, you want your melatonin to be at a good place because melatonin is so important for our health. So wow. sunrise, uh, 10 minutes in sunrise, 15 minutes in UVA light, like minimums, would be, those would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. So this is so fascinating. I, I love this. Now, let me ask you a question. I feel like I'm asking like kindergarten level questions. No, no, no. The, nobody knows this stuff. Amy. I didn't know <laughs> it. Yeah. One of the things that I actually enjoy doing is, um, honestly, I, I get, I do get up so early and have my little time, but by the time, usually the sun starts to rise, especially this time of year, I'm ready to get up and move my body. And so I actually enjoy going on. I just call it a little prayer walk. And that, so would that almost have the same benefit, even if I'm not kind of looking at the sun, but gathering that, that morning light and just, that's yeah. a great time to, if I'm going to do, so what you're saying is y'all, y'all listen up. If you are, if you want to get that, I call it that worthy walk in and you want to go for your walk and, and, and like, a, I just, you know, motion creates emotion. And for me, I actually pray better when I'm in motion. I can actually, my brain is engaged because my body's engaged and I don't get as distracted. Yes. So you're saying that this was actually a beautiful idea to go walking in the sun in the morning, even yes. if it's cold or no matter what time of year it is, this yes. is the same benefits, right? Yes. Okay. I got to schedule this. Yeah. I'm going to schedule my prayer walk in then I got to get, I'm like, I'm going to put yeah. that on my schedule because hormonally it's going to be a good thing for me. I'll, I'll gain energy. And I just actually enjoy it a lot. I just need to lay my clothes out the night before. That's the key for me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. In fact, there's actually, um, so much benefit to exercising in sunlight. So, yeah. I mean, since I learned this, I mean, there's, there's, there's more stuff going on your body at, at the mitochondrial level when we exercise in sunlight. So, I mean, I've been like taking my weights outside now that the weather's getting warmer and 
doing exercise barefoot outside on the ground. Like there's just, I'm just looking for all the ways I can to get myself outside, get connected to nature. Um, Mm -hmm. Especially, this is really important, especially if you're somebody who sits in front of a computer all day, you know, or you're on your phone, you're in like fluorescent or LED overhead lights, like an office building. Um, Even if you can't get outside for long periods of time, anytime you have a break and get outside and view natural sunlight and you get sunlight on your skin, we have receptors in our skin also that signals to the body, not just the eyes, but the skin. Um, Anytime you do that, you are going to improve your health. You just, you just are. So just being mindful and intentional about it is, is, you know, really just where to start with it. So yeah, morning walks is that's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, I love this so much. I can't love this enough. So this is a way to gain energy, to help heal your hormones naturally, to help you sleep better. And the more you sleep better, I mean, sleep is like the epitome of everything that you need for your body to, to run properly. Um, so a nighttime routine will really play into this as well. Um, making sure you're getting that sleep properly, but you know, Deborah, before we hit record on this, we were talking about quantum and this can sound a little bit woo woo, but you're talking about nature and who made the sun, who made the world, who created all of these systems in place and what used to be natural for people to be up and out, you know, working outside, like you can go to the Kroger to grab your groceries. No, you had to go get it in your garden and farm and all of that. So what we know is natural today is so unnatural really for the way that God created the world in our bodies. And and we have to take that extra effort to go out and to make this happen. This is fascinating. Oh my gosh. I I know that uh, my listeners are going to be blown away by all of this. So Deborah, wouldn't you, how long did it take for you when you started to implement this um, consistently in your life? How long did it take for you to see uh, the benefit? I mean, honestly, Amy, for me, it was so fast. It's almost like I didn't even notice. I mean, I literally was like, whoa, wait, I didn't nap today. I didn't need to nap. Wait, I'm feeling so much happier. Like, what is this? What? I, I, it was so subtle. It's, but it was quick for me. It was quick. Now, yeah. depending, you know, everybody's a little different and maybe depends on how um, chaotic your signaling is in your body and how much time you spend under artificial light. Like that may impact how long it takes for you. But <laughs> I think anybody who decides to just implement this consistently is going to see some changes probably fairly quickly. Now, I do need to, you mentioned it about like the nighttime. There is a nighttime routine that, is really needs to be paired. If you're doing all the morning stuff, then there's some things you need to do at night in order for it to really work. That's why I'm saying there's kind of a chronological order to how we want to do this. Um, So you really just need to be blocking blue light at night. That's all I want to say about that. Like you need to get some glasses when the sun goes down. Um, If you're doing all the morning stuff and you're not blocking blue light at night, then you're really sort of you're not undoing it, but you're definitely not getting the full benefit. So those blue light, those ugly blue light blockers are the cute ones. The new ones you get, um, like I, mine go on. one pair. it was just funny. It was just that one pair. They were bad. They were, they were cheap and they were bad. Um, you were like, yeah, my new light blockers I think go you on. said, Amy, do these look bad? I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes. Those are awful. I <laughs> don't wear those. I, I, I totally <laughs> asked you. Yeah. I, you know, I have those somewhere still. I don't think I wear them anymore, but but my blue light blockers go on. And you know what? My brain is actually looking for my blue light blockers because uh, they're orange lens. So it's very soothing for our brains to have that warmer light. I mean, think about like, you know, native people or ancestral people, like at night, you would only have fire. That's true. Or even, you know, now if you're, if there's a bonfire, everybody's like staring at that fire because it's so soothing and yeah. calming. So that's kind of what the blue light blockers do. It puts you your brain in a place to go, okay, it's time. It's nighttime. We're going to stop with the cortisol. We're going to start with the melatonin here pretty soon. And, um, yeah, you really got to be blocking blue light at night if you want to get the full benefit. So, okay. Okay. Everybody y'all go order use some blue light blockers and yes. need readers. Yes. That's okay. Grab some with readers. It's all good. Yeah, um, absolutely. Totally fine. Totally okay. Fine. So Deborah, this has been 
fascinating. You know what I'm going to put in the show notes is I have a morning routine and it talks about have, how to have a nighttime routine. I'm going to put that, it's called my worthy morning routine. I'm going to put that in our show notes. So it just kind of helps to like start that routine. But I want, before we wrap up, talk, can you talk a little bit and, and I'm, you're going to be like, Amy, seriously, just a little bit. Can you talk a little bit about grounding and because you mentioned that from the onset and I know that you go out and you ground and you look at the sun. There's benefits to like barefoot feet in the earth type thing. Y'all, this is not woo woo. If you're just hearing these things for the first time in your life, there is it's it is number one, it works, but it's not woo woo. I mean, so can you just talk a tiny bit about grounding? Yeah super fast. So really, I think I mentioned at the beginning, like we get, our body gets energy. There's like three different ways that our body gets energy. These electrons that the mitochondria use to produce energy. And one of those ways is grounding. So like, if you're never, ever grounding, you're missing out on a way to actually gather energy from the earth, which I know sounds crazy, but it's, there's so much science on it. Um, So it's going to help reduce inflammation in the body. So particularly if you're inflamed and you know, if you're inflamed, Mm -hmm. like you need to spend as much time barefoot as possible. Um, It's just going to really get down to the cellular level of, you know, whatever kind of issues you're having. And it's going to focus that healing energy toward, you know, where it kind of needs to go in the body. So, I mean, that's kind of it in a nutshell, like Mm -hmm. go ground, gather electrons. You're going to be, you know, gain energy. You're going to feel um, just more connected. I think you mentioned it at the beginning, like the more disconnected we are from nature, the, the sicker we are, Amy. I mean, that's really where we are. So we just, we kind of, we all know this intuitively. I think we know this, but we forget it. So we just got to get back to kind of how we were as kids. You know, I was always barefoot in the sun when I was a kid. So, yeah. Okay. Now this is again, just another basic, basic, basic question. Does it, does it need to be in grass or does concrete count too? Okay. You know what? You can actually ground on concrete, not asphalt, not wood. So, um, any kind of dirt, you know, sand, grass, even like dried leaves, and concrete, you can you still can gather some electrons that way. It's not ideal. Like dirt would be better or grass, something like that. But yeah. Okay. I my mind is blown. I am this is part one. I don't know when part two is going to be, Deborah. We'll have to figure that out. But I feel like this just needs oh, there's to so follow much. Up. There's, yeah, there's so much. So, so much. Yeah. All right, yeah. Deborah, let me ask you this. People that are listening, do you take online clients? Are you able to coach? Because you're yeah. you do coaching one on one, right? Yeah. Are yeah. you able to accept out of state? Um, how do people like connect with you or apply to work with you? Yeah, I um, yeah, I'll take clients from anywhere. I mean, so you know, like everything's virtual these days. So mm-hmm. um, I do a lot of work around mineral balancing, which really kind of it goes very well with light and very well with just low energy um, with mineral balancing has a lot to do with the nervous system and actually like getting outside in sunlight and grounding. Those are all very important safety signals to our nervous system. So everything's connected. So yeah, I do a lot of hair tissue mineral testing. And now that I've got this um, certification, I'm definitely applying these cir- they're called circadian principles, you know, based around the sun to just really people help people get healing at you know, the most foundational level. So yeah, I do that. I have, um, I have a free guide, Amy, called building your best circadian day, which oh, wow. outlines a lot of the steps that um, we talked about. Cause I know it's a lot. It's like, what do I do here? When all that. Um, so I've got a little guide that kind of outlines that for people if they're interested. Oh, amazing. Yes. That. Well, we'll definitely put that in our show notes. Um, yeah. I'm going to be grabbing that myself for sure. Yeah. yeah. This is fascinating 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 you know what I forgot to mention you're a beautiful singer oh <laughs> we used to sing you. Together. you are too you are too we did used to sing together yeah that was back in the day we we spent a lot of time singing I don't sing much anymore do you still sing Amy I don't it is so funny people here don't even know that like I'm a singer <laughs> unless I just belt it out you know like I just you know <laughs> yeah. 
You're a great singer. Yeah. And I've heard, yeah, it's oh, we not should have played I it. We should do a little, we should do a little something uh, ending this uh, podcast. I can't think of a song. <laughs> Girl, I am out of practice. Please do not ask me to sing that. that oh is, my gosh. That not, yeah. Oh, well, I'm kind of joking, but this is so fascinating, Deborah. I appreciate you coming on and sharing this information and your passion for it. I'm so glad that you're learning about the um, these all yeah. these little details, and yeah. it can really change somebody's life. I mean, yeah, it sounded like when I heard leptin, you guys, that means lose weight. That helps control your satiety, yeah, and you want, you know, a lot of people just mm-hmm. struggle with eating too much and and just always kind of hungry because the leptin's not bad. Oh yeah. Right? Uh, reduce inflammation. Um, so if you're talking about reducing inflammation, feeling better, having more energy, and um, what was the other thing? Uh, losing weight. Well, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is really important. Mm-hmm. I mean, I work with, a, yeah, I work with a lot of women who have thyroid issues. This is very connected to um, light. Mm-hmm. It's very connected to thyroid health. Um, so yeah, I'll just, won't go into more than that, but it's very important. Okay. So uh, tell me, make sure I'm saying this right. Cause what I've got is five things. If you want to naturally reduce inflammation, help balance your hormones, sleep better at night, lose weight. And, uh, what was, there was one other big benefit. I I improve your mood, like your 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 mood, mood, like Go, go and practice these principles, stand, get Mm -hmm. in the morning sunlight. This was, it was so simple. It's such a simple solution, Deborah. This is phenomenal. I mean, literally phenomenal. And it just makes sense though. You know, like, I feel like you're right. It's like intuitive. It's like, okay. Yeah. God made this, he, he did not make yes. these unnatural lights and for us to be inside. God made all of these right. things. And it's just getting back to the way that, um, the, just the circadian, what did you call this? Circadian yeah. rhythm. That's all it is. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, we were designed, our biology is designed to run on the sunlight. And so think about how much we're not in the sun, how much we're not outside. Um, and you know, that correlates with a lot of sickness. So, you know, let's get back outside, get our feet on the ground and just be intentional. If you feel like, Oh, I can't do it for 10 or 15 minutes, do it for two minutes, one minute. Anything's better than nothing. Do a smidgy, even just a smidgy. Um, okay. So you guys, here's the thing. I would love to hear what you think about this podcast. Number one, you can get connected with Deborah. It's going to be in the show notes. I can tell you were just going to have to be a, a regular guest on this podcast. Are you good with that, Deborah? Yeah, I <laughs> Old love besties. I have so much. I have a, so much to share. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You're just going to be a regular. So Deborah's going to be coming back. But if you want to connect with her, check in the show notes. She has a free gift for you, and it's all about just finding this uh, circuit circadian rhythm. So you can. Um, Go grab that. I would totally grab that. And we would love for you to uh, to, to let us know the feedback. You can hit her up on her DMs or, or, or mine as well. But I would love for you to, uh, you guys help us get this word out. Number one, the first way you can help that is download this episode. Deborah, did you know, because Deborah's about to start a podcast. Did you know that downloads are a thing? I didn't um, know this. Like, I mean, I think I download podcasts, Amy. I think I do. Like if I'm going to go on an airplane, I always make sure I have things downloaded. And no, is that what you, mean? you know that when you start your podcast, Deborah, downloads count for your podcast and they help them get, get them out at a higher level. I didn't know. Okay. And when I they know that, go to yeah. looking at like how successful your podcast is, they look at the number of downloads. Y'all do your uh, sister, Amy here, a big, do, do girlfriend, Amy, a big, uh, a favor, yeah. flavor, right? Yeah. Um, y'all go download on my podcast and you can actually yeah. automatically download it. Like you can push a button. So that's a big deal. So would you screenshot this podcast, throw it in your stories and I'll definitely shout you back out. Um, but it's a big deal yeah. to help get this word out. And this is such a good word. So I love this yep. so much. I love you so much. I miss yep. you. And a girl's you. trip at the beach is coming soon. Yes. Girl, sun, sand. We're going to. Yeah, yes. All I can't it. wait. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be so yeah. good. Yeah. That's I'm, I'm going to be so good. I mean, Thank you. 
Oh, thank you. I love you. Yeah. Thank you for tell having Michael. me on, letting me talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to so share much. this. Um, tell Michael, listen, yeah. hello, and all the kids. Hello. Give him a big hug for me. And all right, you guys. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to the Fit Soul Podcast. We will see you on the next one. Yay. Girlfriend, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm so honored you come back every week and that you share the Fit Soul podcast with your friends and family. Every time you share my podcast on Instagram or Facebook, I do a little happy dance. Make sure you subscribe to the Fit Soul podcast where you'll never miss an episode. You can go to podcast, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode release. And just know, I truly love bringing you excellent content and great guests to provide you motivation and faith inspiration to help you walk worthy. And one of the ways you can help me is to go and leave the Fit Soul Podcast a review. If you have just a moment, would you please go over and leave a review for the Fit Soul Podcast? Thank you again. I love you. And here is your reminder. You are worthy. Until next time. Bye-bye.